Hey everyone, I hope all of you guys are doing good and staying safe. So in this particular video, what I wanted to talk about was DevSecOps with GitHub Actions using self-hosted runners and continuous deployment using Argo CD. So I, I know for sure that these are a lot of terms. It's, it's a very big lab, but I'm not going to take you through the entire lab. I'm going to split it up into different videos, into different phases so that you can clearly understand. I'm going to give you the instructions. We have already done it and I would like you guys to take the time to do it. And at the same time, you know, I wanted to come out with the announcement that we are going to release a DevOps course early next year. And we are going to have a lot of content that is inclined towards the industry with one real time project. A lot of you have been already asking us this. And this is the time that we have taken in to do that, you know, for all of you so that you get industry inclined uh, knowledge in terms of the space of DevOps. Okay. And we are also going to include GitOps into it. So let's get started with today's video. In the first part of this video, I'm going to talk to you about the infrastructure setup. And in the second part, we are going to talk about continuous integration. In the third part, we are going to talk about continuous integration and DevSecOps. And in the fourth part, we are going to talk about continuous deployment, Argo CD's infrastructure setup. And then in the fifth part, we are going to talk about continuous deployment with Argo CD, setting up your project and so on. So let's get started with the first part. Today we are going to talk about the infrastructure setup. I know that all of you guys would probably have AWS accounts, right? So in your AWS accounts, I would like all of you guys to go ahead and create an access key ID and a secret access key uh, with administrator access credentials if possible or EKS full access credentials so that you can create an EKS cluster and its sp uh, specific resources, you know. And then what I would like you guys to do is I would like to I'd like you to open up terminal or command prompt and configure your AWS credentials. And then I would like you to install certain CLI tools. I would like you to install EKCTL, kubectl, and you would already have AWS CLI. You have to install AWS IAM Authenticator. And then what you should do is you have to go ahead and create an EKS cluster using the EKCTL. You can take a look at the EKCTL documentation from Weaveworks in terms of how you would possibly do this. So once you have your Kubernetes cluster set up, the next thing is you should have a GitHub repository where you're going to store your application code. And this GitHub repository should be private in nature. So once you have created your GitHub repository and you have uploaded a sample Spring Boot code from start.spring.io, the next thing that I would possibly like you guys to do is create a personal access token or a PAT for your respective GitHub repository and store it safely. So after that, what we are going to do is we are going to take a look at this particular reference project called as Actions Runner Controller. And this reference project is going to teach us as to how to go ahead and install this particular controller for GitHub Actions into your Kubernetes cluster to host self-hosted runners. So take a look at this project's documentation. It's open source on GitHub. So in this project, all you have to do is you have to provide your personal access token as an auth secret for installing this particular project as a helm chart, as a custom helm chart into your Kubernetes cluster into a namespace called as actions runner system namespace. So once you have installed this project, you should be able to see a pod with two containers running in that particular namespace. So if I do get pod hyphen n on this particular namespace, you should be able to see that there is one pod that is running with two containers. And now this particular controller is going to expose custom resource definitions such as runner, runner deployment, runner set, runner autoscaler onto your cluster. And once it is done, then you are set to go in terms of creating your own self-hosted runners in this particular cluster. So those self-hosted runners can be isolated to run in their own respective namespace. So let's take a look at our self-hosted runner over here. So if I do get pod on the namespace called as self-hosted runners, you should be able to see one runner that is running. And this runner is part of a runner deployment. It's of the API version as part of runner deployment. So it has two containers within it. Let's take a look at what these containers are. You know, so if I go ahead and describe this pod in this particular namespace, you should be able to see two containers. The first container is nothing but our runner container 
and in a moment i'll tell you how to find the docker image for this runner container and the second one is nothing but your docker container so now you can ask me akshay as to why do you need the docker container you know you need the docker container because if this runner is going to go ahead and execute all of your ci steps or your continuous integration steps that you have in github actions if you have any docker related steps so let's say for example you are building a docker image so which means you will use the docker build command if you would like to log into any custom repository like artifactory and so on you would like to execute the docker login command so if you have to execute any docker commands in your ci phase that's why you would need something called as docker in docker running as a sidecar container to your uh, runner container so which means your runner pod is going to have two containers the runner container and your docker container for executing any docker related commands so now where would you possibly find this runner containers docker file so in this particular actions runner controller github repository you have a runner folder within which you have a docker file and this docker file is built based on ubuntu 20.04 take a look at this docker file install any custom tools that you would re require during your ci phase into this docker file and build your own custom docker image or your golden image for running all of your builds and store your golden image into something like artifactory so if you see over here we have this golden image called self runner in artifactory which has the version 5 or the tag 5 so this is our latest image for our github actions runner and that self hosted runner is running within the kh cluster so once you have set up your custom runner into your kh cluster and you have authenticated it with your github repository you will be able to go ahead and see an a runner or a self hosted runner that is associated with your ci repository in github and this custom runner is nothing but if you see this name it ends with lqzpr you can see that the name of this particular pod is lqzpr with the last few characters you know so which means your self hosted runner running within your kh cluster is using a custom docker image for running all of your build commands as well as it's running a sidecar docker in docker container that is being used to run all of your docker related commands in your ci workflow so just to do a small recap create an eks cluster or create a kubernetes cluster go ahead and create a github repository create a personal access token and install the actions runner controller project uh, into your kubernetes cluster to expose custom apis as a help chart and also provide your personal access token for authentication and once you have done this once your crds are in place go ahead and create a runner using a runner deployment specification provided as a reference in the same project if you scroll down to the documentation you should be able to find that so once you have created your runner deployment in your kh cluster into a separate namespace you should be able to see it reflect in your ci repository as a custom runner so now all of the ci aspects of this particular repository are going to be executed on this self hosted runner so you could store the runner's custom docker image onto artifactory if you already have artifactory or you can store it to ecr or you can store it to acr or you can store it to docker hub as a private repository okay so this is it for the part 1 where we have spoken about the infrastructure setup in regards to having your own custom self hosted runner running inside kubernetes connected to your github repository to execute your entire ci flow in the next part we will take a look at our ci flow as well as our code base for our spring boot application with github actions on the ci and then we will take a look at the devsecops and we will move towards argo cd for continuous deployment so thank you so much for taking a look at you know this particular project so this is going to be a five part video series going on to tamil cloud channel so do take a look at it and you will get a lot of knowledge in terms of setting up your own self hosted runner in a kh uh, cluster which is the best practice the most secure industry practice that you could possibly have thank you so much have a great day but also remember that you know one concept today 365 concepts for the year four technical certifications okay. thank you guys see you take care bye bye